today we are going to talk finally we are going back to Egypt we're going to talk about Middle Kingdom period of Egypt yes at the end of the Old Kingdom period something terrible happens to Egypt known to be as the first intermediate period ancient Egypt collapsed into anarchy which is there are no strong kind of like authority there are no orderliness and then everything is just again like a topsy-turvy everything is just like upside down the servants become the master the master become the servants and then the famines are everywhere death because of like the violence robbers and also war it was not a pleasant moment for Egyptians. If you can travel back in time using the time machine, then you should avoid this period, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Gladly, the first intermediate period did not last forever. Egypt is like one of the few ancient civilizations that experienced several times of like collapse into anarchy, but yet they survived. And yes, the first intermediate period was not the first and the last for the ancient Egyptian. There will be also another second intermediate period and also the third. But we'll cover that one later. So now Egypt entering the Middle Kingdom period where everything is being restored. The orderliness is being restored. There are strong figure of authority which has become the Pharaoh uniting like the upper and the lower Egypt. Because during the first intermediate period, Egypt was split between upper and lower. Now under the new Pharaoh in the Middle Kingdom period, the upper and lower is being united. There were only two dynasties in the Middle Kingdom period, the 11th and also the 12th. What is dynasty? Dynasty is basically a series of a king that somehow they are family related, whether they are the children of the previous king or probably the family members of the previous king. Could be the cousin, could be the nephew, could be the brothers. So basically they just have the same family name That's real, that is being called as a dynasty. And dynasty will end if somehow the pharaoh had no longer carried the family name of the of their predecessors. Now the naming of this pharaoh in the 11th dynasty and also the 12th dynasty is very is is a little bit confusing because all of them they have the same family name. They have the same name in fact. So for example the 11th dynasty all of the pharaohs they were known as Intef. And the 12th dynasty all of the pharaoh they were being named as the Mentuhotep. Yes, we will talk more about Mentuhotep, the 12th dynasty later, and now we are going to talk about the 11th dynasty, the Intef family. According to the archaeological findings about the 11th dynasty, from Intef, we found out that the Egyptians, they love pets, just like us, right? They love pets, and their favorite pets are cats and dogs. And some other exotic animals like crocodile and then baboon and also goldfish. Now talks about the cat. Cat has a special role in the Egyptian society and then they love their pets. They even mummified their pets with the hope that somehow they can carry this favorite pet of them into eternally. I mean into the afterlife. You know the Egyptians they believe that mummification is the process that they believe that that will brings them into that will carries them into the afterlife do you know like what onomatopoeia is yes perhaps by this moment your english teachers already teach you like what is onomatopoeia example of the onomatopoeia is for the cat for example how do you call a cat like you know how do you call a cat to come to you like you will call the cat like you know meow something like that right and same thing with the egyptian egyptian also have the onomatopoeia for the cat in fact, the vocabulary for the Egyptian word for cat is mau. Do you see that? Like somehow it's still considered to be as onomatopoeia because probably the cats in Egypt, they sounds like that, mau, okay? Mau. Even ancient Egypt, they also have this kind of like goddess with the head of a cat uh, known as the Bastet. Bastet is like one of the Egyptian goddess that they believe they worship this goddess as like the goddess of the house, the goddess of the um, of the of everything of anything that is kind of like related with the household and kitchen. Perhaps just because somehow maybe the kitchen is like the favorite spot for the cats to hang out in Egypt. Dogs. What about dogs? Egyptian also love dogs. When we talk about like the ancient Egyptian breeds. It's probably they will look like this. They look kind of like the mini greyhound dog or known as the whippet dog. So there you go, cats and dogs and not just cats and dogs. I did mention also that somehow Egyptian, they love also other exotic animals as their pet like baboons, falcon and also alligator. 
Now, I have a question for all of you guys. If you have alligator as your pet, what would you name your alligator? And how would you pet your alligator? Now, the next dynasty in the Middle Kingdom is known also as the 12th dynasty or the Mentuhoteps. Now, the 12th dynasties, these are like the warrior kings. They are, they are known for their ruthlessness. They are known for their also for violence. They somehow, in fact, reunite Upper and Lower Egypt through violence, through war. The name Mentuhotep is from the Egyptian word. Basically, Mentu is the name of the war god, of Egyptian war god. And then Hotep means satisfy or please or happy. So if you combine these two meanings, so you can say their name means the war god is pleased or the war god is happy. Now name is very important, especially for the people in the ancient time. When they name themselves as the god of war is pleased or happy, I mean you can guess uh, which god is like very important in their life and what will be their lifestyle and what will be their what will be their attitude and also their philosophy. Now, for the Egyptians during the Middle Kingdom period, at this moment, they stopped building any pyramids. They learned from the Old Kingdom period that building pyramid is a bad idea because it will attract the robbers. And then the robbers will, the robbers will rob their tombs, okay? If they rob the tombs, if they stole the mummy, if they stole the treasures and everything, that means this pharaoh who are being buried inside of that tomb, they will not be able to go to the afterlife. So, the trend during the Middle Kingdom period is like they will try to build a hidden tombs. The hidden it is, I mean, the more hidden it is, the better. And the place that they pick is on the western side of the Nile River, which is they believe as the land of the dead, because as the sun set in the west, therefore they associate sun set in the west as the death, and then sunrise in the east means kind of like you know, uh, resurrect or live again. So it is common kind of things that you will see kind of like the settlements or the ancient ruins of the the ancient cities of the Egyptian cities located on the eastern part of the Nile River. But meanwhile, the tombs and everything will be always on the west, the land of the dead. The pharaoh in the Middle Kingdom period, they make a very kind of like unique coffin. Compared to all of the period in Egypt, this, is, this, is, this was like very uniquely kind of like made and built during the Middle Kingdom period. They made the coffin out of like wood and then it looks rectangular okay it looks it looks rectangular and i'm going to show you guys the picture and then it has a a pair of an eye on its side now what is this eyes for they believe that these eyes is like so the so the pharaoh okay could see in the afterlife they could see the surrounding through these eyes they could they could see like where they are going in the afterlife something like that and not just that one, they also, inside of this kind of like, you know, coffin, they wrote the prayer spell for the Pharaoh to be resurrected again. Egyptians are very superstitious about it. And then somehow, they kept it as a secret uh, by writing it inside of the coffin, rather than just during the, uh, rather than on the wall of the tomb, because simply a lot of people, they want to also get the immortal, get the immortality by entering into this tomb and they will kind of like what, they will secretly copy the spell and then like use it for themselves. Of course, the pharaoh, they don't want to share that, so that's why they write it inside of the coffin. Now, again, reality check. If you're asking me like, is, is it true? Is it working? The answer is, of course not. Okay, this is like what the ancient Egyptian believe. Another kind of like interesting new thing that being made during the Middle Kingdom period is the Mortuary Temple. Mortuary Temple. It was being introduced by the Mentuhoteps, one of the Mentuhoteps kings or pharaoh. It's a temple slash tombs. Yes, tomb and temple at the same time. So it's a place where it's a place for their mom. I mean, it's the place for the pharaoh to be buried. At the same time, it's the place where the temple is being built, so people can come to the place and then worship gods. So, and then it was it was beautifully being built right next to a cliff in a place by the name of Deir El Bahri. This temple, known as like the Deir El Bahri Temple, it, it was a kind of like interesting building because they make the tomb looks less creepy. They make the tombs become beautiful where people can hang out and then like, you know, somehow do their worship. Another unique thing about Middle Kingdom period is that the, during the Middle Kingdom period, they make the best gold jewelries. 
Yes. Like, if you study Kanabaki no Egyptian as the archaeologist, then you can spot it right away that the accessories is being made during the Middle Kingdom period. Because the quality, the color, and also like the, 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 the designs of the gold itself, it was like the best of its time compared to the other periods. And not just that one, also the quality of the hieroglyphics painting and also the quality of the hieroglyphics writings. Hieroglyphics is uh, basically is the Egyptian alphabet that using symbol, using picture to, to representing the sounds of, I mean, to representing the sound and also to representing like the meaning. So we just, we are going to have a project about it and I'm going to assign you guys separately. Well, Middle Kingdom Egypt pharaohs, they learn from their history, they learn from the Old Kingdom period that they need to make sure that the succession between like one pharaoh to another, to the next pharaoh to the next pharaoh must be clear and must be as smooth as possible because they don't want to end up like Pepe II. He died without any heir, he died without, he died without any kind of like clear instruction like who is going to become the next pharaoh. Then what happened is like, you know, Egypt fell into chaos, right, during the first intermediate period. So because of that one, during the Middle Kingdom period, it was a common thing that the Pharaoh practiced like what we call the co-regency. What is co-regency? means like this. They will have two Pharaohs. The first Pharaoh is the senior one, usually the father, and after that, the junior one, usually the, their son. Okay, the son is kind of like, you know, somehow become the Pharaoh, but Pharaoh in training. With the hope that one day, when the father died, when the senior Pharaoh died, the junior pharaoh will be ready and then he will become the senior pharaoh and after that he will have to pick another junior pharaoh which is usually the son so and on and on and on and on and on now smart huh however it does not spare them from another intermediate period yes middle kingdom period it was awesome because somehow egypt brought back the orderliness the concept of ma'at back to egypt but it does not spare them for another moment of chaos. We'll find out more about it next time. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. God bless you guys all. Bye-bye.